So welcome to Manchester. Today I'm in Marble Brewery with Joe and um, we're going to have a bit of a chat about Manchester's beer scene. Tell us a little bit about Marble. Uh, yeah, so Marble was founded in 1997, sort of pre-first wave, first wave of craft brewing in the in the UK. Uh, a big emphasis on flavour, creating, yeah, very, at the time, cutting edge beers, something that we've tried to, to hold on to through the lifetime of the brewery. The brewery sort of spanned almost three ages or generations or, or kits. It started off in the back room of the Marble Arch pub, like I said, in 97 very quickly outgrew that space um, and moved 100 meters down the road to a, a railway arch in Gould Street, one of the first, if not the first, brewery in the UK to be in a railway arch, which is yeah, quite funny to look, to look back on, on now, seeing the, the explosion and the way that scene, scene's grown. And then in 2019, we moved to this facility here, which we sort of built up around us and yeah, hopefully we'll be here for some time. Yeah. Do you have a a great history of nurturing some awesome brewing talent here. So, you know, there's great brewers started here, went on to find some really impressive breweries. Is that something that you plan to do or do you want to hold on to the staff you have now? <laughs> uh, it's a little bit of both. It, look, it's, it's something I noticed when I came to Marble that, yeah, big boots to fill, as it were to speak. You know, guys like James Campbell, Matt Howgate, Dominic Driscoll, Colin Strong, Rob, Stuart Ball. There's, there's, there's been a lot of not just great brewers, but but really excellent people. And you know, I came into brewing quite young and people that I admired, not just for their like talent or skill or potential, but for who they were and how they held themselves and, and carried themselves. So it's always great to be able to, to give back and help mold people in their careers and watch them go off and, and achieve like amazing things. Uh, chaps like uh, Paul Walker, who now does a lot of research brewing for BrewDog at their outpost in, in Manchester. It's it's awesome to see people go, but I'm not happy. Like I'm not unhappy that the the guys we have turn up here every day. I think it's you can't be a great teacher if you don't want to see people go and succeed. Yeah, and yeah, you yeah you have to be happy for people to to go and move on. But yeah, the the team we've got here at the moment is incredibly strong. We've all worked together for for years and years now. Everyone's you know skills are, are highly developed. Everyone works well together. It's it's great to, to come in and, and see the same faces every day. Yeah. One thing I would regard Marble as is exceptionally good at making cask ale. Um, you have now, you continue to make exceptionally good cask ale, but you've sort of um, transitioned into making contemporary styles as well. How has that been to manage from a production point of view and a business point of view? Uh, interesting. From a, a business point of view, I don't, I don't know how well I can speak on it. I've, yeah, production first and foremost, and then yeah. the business will, will follow, ho yeah. hopefully. Yeah. For us, it's really interesting. It's a nice problem to have in a way that, yeah, we can look backwards and take inspiration and guidance and knowledge, but we can look forwards as well. It's, it's a nice problem for me to have that there's, there's no ultimate pressure to be on the, the cutting edge or predict the next wave or know what the next trend trend is we're quite happy to cut our own path which is something i've seen marble do for a really long time yeah so to be part of the team and be able to sort of to guide it in a way where yeah it it's nice to not have a path to follow but that comes with you don't you know you're in a field with no map and the grass is up to your eyes um yeah. which is yeah it, again it's really exciting the we we like to do things our way so it's really interesting for us, like the, we, it's very used cliche by a lot of brewers, but we like to make what we drink. So we all enjoy cast beer. We all enjoy it. We have an incredible pub called the Marble Arch, which serves like phenomenal, phenomenal cast beer. Some of the best in the country, if I'm not a touch bias on it. 
Yeah. Uh, so that's that's always going to have a special place for us. That's always going to be in our hearts. It's always going to have attention and care and detail put to it. But I also like grew up essentially like drinking West Coast pale ales and IPAs. Those beers mean a lot to me. We again put a lot of attention to detail into making them. I really, you know, sort of the more Germanic style sours, Berliner Weisses, Gozers, uh, something I enjoy a lot of. And I know other members of the team do. We like to take sort of tradition and innovation and what you find in the middle of that will be marble. So we're very proud of our house yeast culture, which has come through the through the brewery, through generations of brewers, which leaves a very distinct thumbprint on a lot of our core beers. But we also like to experiment with, with other things and, and yeah. move on. And the same with packaging formats and processes, like how can you make something that's very uniquely a Northern style bitter like Manchester bitter? How can you make it work in keg? Because it's desired in an export market. You don't want to send a substandard like product or you don't want to send something that's not as good as it is here. So how do you get something that's going from cast to keg up to a level where you're really proud of it and happy for it to represent us and the brewery and the Northwest in, yeah. you know, around the world. So a lot of time and effort and work into that. And yeah, interesting problems. Yeah. If like we, we get a big homebrew contingent watch this channel. If somebody wants to replicate a marble beer, can they do it? Just when you touch on the thumbprint yeast, you know, you have your own unique house culture. If someone's wanting to design a recipe, say they like Manchester bitter yeah. and they want to replicate it. Have you any tips for them? Um, less is more. So we find a lot with those beers, like, yeah, less is more, especially if you take Manchester bitter, for example, it's um, like three, four, just different barley types. We, there's no salt additions. There's no water treatments for it because it, represents the Northwest. We have Northwest water. Yeah. Um, yeah, very, very little touches of stuff, the hopping in it. There's no, like, there's not even bittering hops in it. Everything's saved for a whirlpool charge. There's, it uses for a bit of quite bold hops, but very, very sparingly. With our beers, whether it's bitter, stout, um, you know, Lagonda Earl Grey, everything, it's a very holistic approach, so small light touches on the ingredients and they all have their time and place and it's as they work together you get the whole product yeah so the the if something like oh bitter for example you want a nice malt base that accentuates the yeast which accentuates the hops which gives you a rounded product for earl gray the malt base is almost an english ipa with yeah again marbles house yeast and then like hops specifically chosen to to really lift up the tea they're not trying to trip over each other nothing's trying to be louder than anything else it's, yeah it's all there to lift each other up finally the last question i want to ask you like we have a lot of brewers watch this you have moved from the railway arch to the the building here designed the tap room and the brewery any tips for how to approach that if somebody's upscaling their new venue anything that you learned in that process Write stuff down. Yeah. So a lot of this I tried to do in my head, which worked and also didn't work. Try not to have a child in the middle of it, which was uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also, also another thing that I miss, mistimed. Um, but yeah, be like, be real, but be bold. Have, if you're in a position where you're looking to expand or grow or go bigger, you like, you clearly back yourself. Yeah, so yeah. like, be smart about it. Don't go from, a thousand liters a year to half a million, but yeah. know know what you know what you're doing. Know what the goal is. So work hard today, so you don't have to work as hard tomorrow. So if you're going yeah from a thousand heck to five thousand, but your end goal is ten thousand in three years, put the infrastructure in to yeah. have that, so you don't have to re-go over it. In terms of very practical things, spend all of your money on the floor and the drainage because it's. You can change tanks, you can change boilers, fridges, it can all be changed. You cannot change your floor without changing everything else. So that's the, yeah. whatever your budget is, that should be your floor. The rest of it, you'll find a way. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And if somebody's watching this and they want to get your beer, how do they get hold of it? Uh, bonus, we have a website, uh, marblebeers.com. We ship to Northern Ireland. Yeah. Mostly, I think. I, we definitely do. Yeah. Yeah, get in touch. The phone number for the breweries on the website. If you're a bar, I think we have 
seller and trade accounts. Contact Get A Brood. Yeah, yeah. we'll yeah. stick a link in the description. Yeah. Show the guys some love, follow them on socials, and um, Joe, thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Great stuff. Cool.